All right, staff, thank you for joining me once again. We're today, we're going to read a paper together so that we can all learn how to read Mendelian so called randomization papers a bit. Stick around, that's what we're doing. Thanks for sticking around. Now we're doing it. All right, here we go. This is a paper entitled Low Density Lipoprotein Cholesterol and Lifespan, a Mendelian Randomization Study. By two authors there. Well, let's go straight there. Who are these two? Right. So number one is from the Harvard Medical School in Boston. Okay. So that tells you a lot if you know anything about anything. All right, who is number two? Dipender Gill. Dipender Gill is from the Department of Epidurally Moodlymology and Biostatistics in the School of Public Health, Imperial College, Londinium. Good, good. He's also Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics Section, Institute of Medical and Biomedical Education and Institute for Infection and Immunity, St. George's University of London. Furthermore, another role that this person holds is Clinical Pharmacology Group, Pharmacy and Medicines Directorate, St. George's University Hospitals, NHS Foundation Trust. Uh, not to mention, there we go, number five, a conflict of interest involving a company. <laughs> right there on the front page. All right. Uh, that might be of interest to the topic of this particular paper, of course. Hence, I'm saying, look, conflicts of interest. It's not as big as the European Consensus Panel one, because that one's always a hoot. But let's go through this paper just to see a National Institute for Health Research Clinical Lectureship Grant and Award and a British Heart Foundation Research Center of Excellence Award. Okay, but nothing to do with the company paying one of its authors to have an opinion, probably at all. Nothing to see there. All right, Ames. It is unknown whether long-term low-density lipoprotein cholesterol (LDLC) lowering increases lifespan and longevity in a general population not selected for elevated cardiovascular risk. The present study aimed to investigate the overall and gene-specific effect, effect of circulating LDLC levels on lifespan and longevity, both in a general population. Well, that's a lofty aim. It's a great aim. I'm glad that this paper had a name. I'm sure you're all now well acquainted with the aim of this paper. Let's see if the aim's any good. Let's, let's see if their targeting towards that aim is particularly good here. Because we're told that this Mendelian randomization stuff is great, aren't we kids? Let's see how great it is. All right. Leveraging data from the Global Lipids Genetics Consortium, N equals 173,082, we identified genetic variants to proxy LDLC levels generally. I think we're done with this paper. There we go. That's why I took quite a bit of time over the introduction. So thanks for joining me. Join me next time uh, when we'll see whether somebody's aim is good or not. Oh, all right. Since we started, let's finish. I know. I'm such a tease. All right, so what we're doing is we are guesstimating a person's LDL level, a number of person's LDL levels, uh, 173,000 or so peoples. We're not measuring anybody's LDLC levels at all, and yet this is a paper that purports to be able to claim uh, some kind of hugely advanced level of causal inference to a thing that is not being measured at all. Does anybody else see a problem with that? other than myself. Well, you could say, well, okay, if it's been used as a proxy, how good's the proxy? Well, poor. People tend to be quite variant around various uh, coincidental markers. So the signal-to-noise ratio in that is going to be appalling. So anything that comes out of this is going to be similarly appalling. All right, I hope that goes up some flagpoles. All right, 
So they, uh, they identified some proxies to uh, guesstimated LDLC levels generally, i.e. with an error of estimation, quite a large one, and also through perturbation of particular drug targets like HMG, CR, uh, MPC, 1L1, and PSK9. Three different sorts of drugs that work to lower the cholesterol level directly, actually, in a person's blood. And in so doing, that has a knock-on effect of having an, eff an effect on the number of circulating lipoproteins to carry the cholesterol. Okay, if cholesterol is less, fewer lipoproteins are required, and so the body produces fewer of them. All makes perfect sense, whatever. Anyway, we investigated their association with lifespan. And so now suddenly we have N equals 1,012,240. So where did that come from? Are they additional? So are we talking about an entire sample size of 1.1? 1 .1 eight five million give or take okay let's say that's what we're doing not very clear was it uh let's say that's what they're doing good um so using mendelian randomization and i'm giving that because it's not random at all in fact um and using replicated results using the outcome of longevity to the 90th versus 60th percentile age so they're taking two markers at various um, percentages of the total lifespan of people, and then they're going to get what is that age, plus or minus variation around those two points. So this is pretty looking pretty fuzzy as an informative outcome, um, even right there, before you get to my original point, which is that they're actually not measuring the LDLC in anybody. And so any comment about LDLC levels in people on the basis of what SNPs they might carry in their particular genetic makeup, well, it's a bit of a laugh, isn't it, kids? It really is. And so when these absolute buffoons, these ignorant, arrogant, ill-educated anti-scientists who would throw these kind of papers at you as some kind of proof of something, this is why we need to laugh in their faces. This is some great science here so far, isn't it? Right, let's look at the results. A1 standard deviation increase in genetically proxied, guessed, LDLC, was associated with 1.2 years lower life span with the 95% confidence intervals being minus 1.55 at the lowest to minus 0 0.87 at the highest end of the estimate range with a very, very small p-value. That's to do largely with the sample size and not so much to do with the size of the signal in any way because we've already decided the signal is as noisy as hell, haven't we? Findings were consistent in statistical sensitivity analysis. Okay, fine. You can design a program of um, data manipulation to make anything fit almost anything you want if you really know what you're doing. Uh, but anyway, they've done that. And when considering the outcome of longevity, odds ratio for survival to the 90th versus 60th percentile age. So what is that? What is our outcome variable there? Anybody confused? Okay. The odds ratio. Well, an odds ratio <clears throat> is a manufactured outcome statistic. It's not an observation that was made. It's secondary to observations that were made. Unfortunately, the derived unit of um, odds ratio occurs and is derived after the observations that have been made are adjusted inappropriately using something as farcical as multivariate regression as a proposed indicator of causality any more than a univariate 
X versus Y situation is able to inform on causality. It simply can't, of course. And um, so the whole thing falls down there as well. Anywho, so they've come up with this thing called an odds ratio, a manufactured outcome statistic, which they've massaged to say what they, whatever they want, pretty much. And it's, you know, less than a year in a lifespan, but we still haven't actually looked at anyone's LDLC levels, let alone their lifetime actual exposure to L. See, the thing is, if you're going to, like, point the finger of blame at a physiological thing, such as one's LDLC level in the blood exposure over a lifetime, you've got to measure that, surely. Which means you need an ongoing, you know, continuous meter on these people's LDLC levels so that you can report their LDLC exposure over their lifetime as an area under a curve. Not by guessing what their LDLC levels might be on the basis of some gene snips that they've got. I hope people are getting this. I really do. I know I'm um, giving it the more discursive treatment. Uh, I'm just letting some of the stuff sink in before we move on, really. Right, so we've got less than a year association between a derived, made-up, massaged, fabricated outcome variable and um, some other thing. Conclusions. This genetic evidence supports that higher LDLC levels reduce lifespan and longevity. No, it doesn't. Doesn't at all. Because remember, the study hasn't measured anybody's LDLC level. Sorry about that. Disciplines of science again. I know. I'm just a science denier. No, I'm, I'm the guy that demands that we insist upon science. And guessing what something might have been without measuring it is not doing science, is it, kids? No. All right. Good. In a general population that is not selected for increased cardiovascular risk, there is likely to be a net lifespan benefit, it says, of LDLC lowering therapies. No. This data set is incapable of, inf of informing on that question in any way. Not at all. That's a lie. I wonder if it's underpinned by the fact that one of these authors is paid money by a company that might be financially interested in what someone might say publicly or in the peer-reviewed literature about such a thing. I wonder. Because it's the statement is not underpinned by the data. Uh -huh. uh, particularly for PS, uh, PCSK9 inhibitors. Oh, I wonder if that company makes that thing. I don't know. Does it? Uh, although randomised controlled trials are necessary before modification of clinical practice. See that? Randomized control trials are necessary. So these buffoons that are firing these Mendelian things at you as proof and good proof and causal evidence, what they are actually doing is betraying themselves to you and everybody else watching as a buffoon of the highest order who does not understand what science is and what science is not, basically. Now, there will be people saying, oh, yes, but this is, this is a general look at mortality from all causes. What about the Mendelian stuff that absolutely proves that LDLC is causally connected with heart disease, atherosclerosis? Is that Mendelian stuff any better than this stuff? That'll be my next video. Spoiler. No. All right. See you then. Enjoy um, whatever it is that you're doing. I hope this has been valuable. We don't need to read this paper. We can see what they've done here. They have guessed at one of the variables. They haven't measured it at all. We're done. <laughs> all right. Ciao for now.